My name is Kendall Jones. I'm a native Texan. I grew up hunting all over the world, and this is my first time to Spain to actually hunt. It is cold out here. <laughs> I was not expecting it to be this cool. I'm bundled up now. <laughs> what caliber is? 300. Okay. 300 it looks like a... Yeah. There's some punch to her. Yeah. So this is actually my second time to Spain. I came over here in college. I studied abroad for a month and a half. And while I was over here in college, I really wanted to hunt, but it wasn't during season. So I always knew I wanted to come back. I love this country. It is so pretty. The people are awesome. The food is great. It's just a very beautiful place. So um, Spain has a special place in my heart for sure. I met Kendall some years ago uh, during the CIA convention. Uh, we were talking about uh, hunting in Spain. So we start to organize that trip and uh, finally we are here in Spain. Uh, I just want to say uh, to me as a guide it's very easy to hunt with people like Kendall because you can see they are used to hunt and they are used to use guns so that, that makes my, my job easier. So uh, it's been a pleasure to hunt with Kendall and his friends uh, here in Spain. It's day one, we're out here. Um, we found a little spot to glass and then we came to another spot. So we're just kind of seeing what the evening looks like and see if we can spot anything to come back on tomorrow. Coming over here, I really didn't know what to expect on what the hunt was going to go down like. Um, I didn't know exactly how we were going to be hunting, but it was a spot and stock situation. Pablo has a large amount of land, so we would drive around, get to the top of a brim and glass, and if we saw one, we'd try and make a stock in on it. The first day we saw a big group of Ibex, but I wasn't really feeling great and they were kind of far away, but I had my friends coming in later, so um, they were going to try and go after that. The second day, I just was not feeling good at all, so I really rested, slept here, and caught up on my sleep, caught up on the time change, all of that. Um, and then the third day is whenever I had my opportunity to close in and um, kill an Ibex. Now we were spotting these and now we're going to make a circle mm -hmm. to see if they are on the canyon. Gotcha. But they have to be somewhere here for sure. So yesterday we came out and we went on a morning hunt, but I was not feeling good. So I went back and rested for the rest of the day. And Pablo came out and went scouting and he said that he saw a group over here. So we're gonna see if we can find them.
spotted a group of ibex but we're trying to go down and cut them off and make the distance shorter. They were about 500 yards but we're trying to cut them off on the other side of the mountain. Pablo is going to go down this road just a little bit and see what he sees to see if we should go this way or this way. spotted three big ibex but Pablo just went to get a better look so um, we're gonna see what he says. Finally, we got to one point where we saw a big group on the side of a hill and we were able to close in and I made a shot under 150 yards. It, it was truly amazing. to the left and the right, but the shot is perfect. Perfect. Let's go to see the ibex. So uh, with Kendall, we were looking for a nice, mature uh, animal. Um, she was ma more uh, more worried about the experience and the age of the animal than the trophy. So I think we just shot the perfect one because it was a nice trophy, but a very old animal as well. And the experience was also very exciting because we saw first a group, we tried to stalk that group, but suddenly we see another group with a bigger one on the left, so it was a, kind of a, a great experience for all of us. On the third day, um, that's whenever my day was successful. We drove around that morning, were able to glass a few spots, and we saw a big group of ibex on the side of this mountain, so we were able to stalk in, close the gap, and right as we were looking at this big group of ibex, Pablo spotted some off to the left where um, they were actually walking towards us, and we changed the game plan. Those three that were to the left were a little bit bigger, a little bit older, a little bit more mature. And so I was able to get a shot off at one of those and that is how I was successful. Now I can be 
done. Be happy. Oh my gosh! It's a beautiful one. Very old one. And that's a typical potato shape. Yeah. What do the rings mean? Every ring is a year. So that's okay. gonna be a very old one. So one, two. Is that? It's a, that's one. Oh, okay. But that's two. So this one's like 11, 12? 11, 12, yeah. Beautiful. Nice. Congratulations. Thank you. I met Pablo a couple years ago at the SCI convention and I had told them I really want to come to Spain. I've always wanted to hunt Ibex and so that's whenever the conversation started about me actually coming over here. And then I talked to some of the guys back home that have that always like going on hunting trips and I was telling them about it and they were like, heck yeah, I want to go over there and kill an Ibex. And so um, we got everything lined up and that's how the trip came about and I couldn't recommend it more. They have had an awesome time over here as well. They were successful on two Ibex as well. And so now we're going home with three Ibex. Pablo and his crew at Wild Hunting Spain have been absolutely amazing. Um, the accommodations are top notch, five stars for sure. The travel has been super easy, everything's gone very smoothly. So if you're ever looking to come over and go hunting in Spain, I would highly recommend Pablo and his guys. Everything has been amazing over here, the food has been incredible, the hunting has been great. Um, this country is filled with Ibex, so you'll never be short on Ibex over here, but just the whole trip has been incredible. I would highly recommend it. <laughs>